say that uh, we should continuously remember that we need to have uh, some reasons why we are we are being trained so that we can transform ourselves from performance to a higher level of performance that um, we want we hope that uh, we'll take these trainings very seriously so that um, we can benefit from from the tree. Thank you very much, Purity. Awesome. Thank you so much, Richard, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. As I've just said, uh, today we have uh, a lot of lessons lined up for you, and I'm privileged to be your facilitator. I believe all of us, we have met at one point in the previous webinars. However, if we have not, my name is Purity Wajiro. I'm the director for, H uh, for Acturex Leadership and Management Consultants Limited. Uh, we are a HR consulting firm, uh, just based here in Nairobi, but I'm very happy and excited this afternoon to be able to bring you uh, classes, a masterclass on interpersonal relationship, uh, and that will cut across our group dynamics, it will cut across public relations, how to organize our work and how to develop our team. I hope I'm audible enough and uh, you can also see me. Can I get some feedback? Yes, we can see you. And you can hear me clearly. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. So I, 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 have, I have segmented today's uh, masterclass into three parts. Uh, and that would mean also that we'll also have uh, at least three group discussions if time allows us. But the very first topic I'm going to cover is interpersonal skills and what do we understand by the term interpersonal skills? Or what is interpersonal skills? What do we understand by that? Somebody just unmute yourself and, and talk to me. Or do I pick someone? Uh, Henry, Henley Risenge. Do you know what is interpersonal skills or interpersonal relationship? Okay, I'll assume we don't know. So uh, then we'll, we'll just go straight to to, 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 to what it is in terms of definition, so that we are able to actually understand uh, from uh, what ideally when you hear people say, we need to work on our interpersonal skills. And, and it's very right what uh, Coach Richard has just told us. Uh, interpersonal skills is the relationship between one person and the other person. So normally when, when you are interacting with individuals, that is interpersonal skills. When you talk to your neighbor, when you talk to a customer, when you talk to your friends, that is interpersonal skills. Even when you talk to your colleagues, one colleague to the other, that is interpersonal skills. But now we bring it to become more clearer, like in an organizational setting, what exactly do we mean by interpersonal skills? So our, our interpersonal relationship. So what this means is, uh, it refers to social and emotional interaction, social and emotional. So the fact that you, you, you are selling airtime to your customers does not mean you're not involving the emotional beat of that interaction. So it has to be very social and emotional. And that's why whenever 
for example, you walk to any customer, or to any Safaricom shop, the first thing they tell you is, Karibu sana, how are you? How can we help you today? That is interpersonal. And I believe, I, I doubt if I've been to any of your shops, I think I need to make it a purpose and visit one of your shops just to see how you will welcome me as a potential customer. So, uh, and it's, we also have another definition that says, it is a close association between individuals who share the same or common interests and goals. And that is true. When a customer comes to your shop or to your business, there's something that has brought them to that shop. You know, one, they, they have come to buy airtime, but you're also there to sell the same airtime. So you see these two things are what are, are bringing you together. That is, that is what I will personally call, say, it is like there's a common goal. When a mama wants to buy a phone, they come to your shop because your shop provides a phone. So you see, that is where there is, that is where I will say there's a common goal. And even when you talk to our friends, as much as maybe we are just, we want to gossip someone, that gossip is what is bringing us together. And or what, that is the purpose or the goal of that, of that conversation. So ideally, for, for interpersonal skill uh, relationships to, to be successful, there must be a common goal. So every time you see a customer walking in into your business, you ask yourself, why are they coming in? Do I have a solution to provide to them? So uh, that is uh, basically like the definition. Uh, Sarah, you're saying you're not able to get me. Is it the sound that you're not able to hear? Sarah, just try to uh, to mute and unmute yourself again. Eh? Your mic should be working. If if you click on it and then click on it, you 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 need it needs to be working. Let me know once it starts working. Eh? All right, let's continue. So uh, there are various ways or types of interpersonal relations because as I've said, how we relate at corporate level or at business level could be so different on as I'd like how we we'll relate on a casual or family. So basically I've listed the three big, uh, no, the four biggest categories of interpersonal relationship. And these are very common. And even if I ask anyone today, have you, have you experienced all the four of them? You'll tell me, yes, you have experienced. Because if you woke up in the morning in a family, I will assume you experience the social uh, relationship. Like you wake up, you tell people, good morning, how are you? How was your night? Did you sleep well? Are we having breakfast today? Or what are we having for breakfast today in the morning? You see, that is, that is family and also social. You came to work, I would want to assume your colleagues are your friends. You know, <laughs> so it covers the friendship part of interpersonal relationship. Then you get to the office, the same questions. Hi, good morning. There was a lot of traffic, all that. That is that covers the friendship part of it. Then then now the customer starts streaming in. They come and ask you, How are you? Do you have MPESA? Tell them yes. How much do you want me to deposit? Or do you want to deposit or to withdraw? They tell you, I want you to deposit for me 1,000 shillings. Or they tell you, I want you to withdraw for me 5,000 shillings. Now you see, even before it's 10 a.m., uh, in any particular day, you have experienced all the four uh, different types of interpersonal relationship. Just as a question. Which one do you think it is easier? Or which one do you feel it's easy for you? Is it friendship? Is it family? Is it professional or is it social? Anyone can, can, can just admit and tell me that. Which is easy? I can't hear you, Simba Karatina. 
social relationships. Social is easy <laughs> because it doesn't have any structure. Cindy, yes. yeah. Like today, it's Saturday. You you want to call your boys and go out for a drink. You know, like there's no formality in social. Let me hear from someone else. Anyone else? Tell me which one is easy for you. Is it social? Is it uh, professional at the workplace? Is it family or is it uh, friendship? John, John from Chuka says it's a friendship for him. Eh? You're just friends. You don't need any structure to talk to your friends. Asiampo also says uh, it's social. You can also put it on the chat box. If you're not able to speak to me, kindly just put it on the chat box. Hmm? Eh, Jacqueline, you're saying it's social. And you'll see, and why do you think social is easy and like the professional? Hmm? Zach is saying greeting family is a bit difficult. <laughs> Why is it difficult, eh, Zach? Eh, Zach Benjamin, why do you think it is difficult uh, greeting your family? I think your family has been with you the longest, so should I, I would want to think it should be the easiest. Hmm? Kelly, someone speak to me. I started today with a video on how to unmute yourself. So I'm expecting everyone should be able to unmute themselves and talk to me. Or do I pick anyone? Anthony from Likoni. Why do you think social interactions are easy? Jacqueline in Loy Talk Talk. I think it is easy with social relationship because you meet different people in mm -hmm. different levels. Mm -hmm. Me, I think social relationship is very easy because you can deal with anyone from any place mm -hmm. or from any group. Mm -hmm. You can work with anyone. And and why do you think professional is hard? Professional, it is specifically for people in that field. <laughs> but when you're talking in the same field, specifically doing mm -hmm. one particular, but social, I think it is somehow easy, more than professional. Okay. And uh, thank you so much, Jacqueline, for that. And, and you see, I, I want to agree with Jacqueline. With social, there are so many people you interact with. And I also want to agree with John that says social has in a formula as you move on, you know, and like for professional, you have a, a certain way to approach the customer. You must say, hello, how are you? How are you doing today? How can I serve you? You see, that one is very, very structured. Uh, mm -hmm. A comment from Benjamin, and this one is, is interesting. He says, uh, with family, we wake up, we are just talking, minus not knowing how someone is doing. Okay, I don't want to indulge in with families because I feel like families are a bit sensitive. <laughs> that would be very true. You wake up, you, tell, you ask everyone, how are you? The common answer as uh, Rosemary on the other session was telling us, the very common answer is I am fine. And that does not answer how you actually are. So uh, the next bit, I want to indulge you some more and I really hope this time round, uh, are, are all of us comfortable with Zoom? Because I want to send you into groups and these groups I want you to discuss. So uh, is everyone comfortable with Zoom? Yes. Yes? Is everyone able to mute and unmute themselves so that you can hear each other once you go to the groups? Hear each other once Sorry, I can't hear you. And I'm asking, is everyone comfortable 
are is everyone comfortable to be sent into rooms for, for, for you guys to do a discussion? Please say yes or no. So we know that uh, whether we are so going to do that. Uh, Ikosawa. Malindi yeah. Ikosawa. Malindi Ikosawa. Uh -huh. Let me get another feedback. Digo Ikosawa. Digo Ikosawa. Uh -huh. <laughs> Le tok tok we are okay. <laughs> Le tok tok we are okay. Uh -huh. What are you are okay. You are okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. So I would want to ask you all of us can comfortably get into the room. Right? Okay. All right. Let me just do a quick, a quick uh like learning. If you are on your phone, just Let's stop the screen of Zoom. I would want to assume. Uh, let me show you. Uh, some people are still talking. Okay, this is my phone. Eh? I hope all of us can can see it clearly. Yeah? So, if this is my phone, if you if you touch on me, you are able to see the mic button here and the video button here. Can you, someone confirm for me you can see what I'm talking about? Yes. There's a mic button and there's a video button there. Yes, we can see. But yes, it normally see. disappears. After a short time, it normally disappears. Eh? Yes. So if, if you want to see it again, you just touch on your just screen. Just tap on the screen, yeah. Then you, you unmute yourself. Okay. You 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 are unmuting. Okay. Uh -huh. But when there's a cross, like you want a slash, the red one, it means someone can't hear you. Are we together? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm. Uh, I want to open up the groups just briefly, so you see uh, how to navigate in the group on your phone. If you are using your phone or your laptop, either way. When we open groups, normally you get a trigger. You see, like it for me, it has come on my screen. Is it? Is it okay? So once that trigger comes on the screen, you click join. And when you click join, it takes you to the room. Okay? So when you get to the room, the same process. You tap on your screen and unmute yourself so that you can be able to, to, to talk in that group discussion. Is that clear? I hope that is clear. So I'm closing the group. Uh, just give me a minute. Uh, I'm closing the group and now I'll open the group again. After a short while. Someone give me feedback that to me lower what I have done. Daniel, are we together? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I hope now everyone can comfortably get into the room and have a proper discussion. That is my coach. Do you think uh, that is good enough? Or I need to repeat. Okay. Uh, do you think that demonstration uh, serves the purpose? It will take some time. Uh, sorry, can... Richard, I can't hear you. I am saying oh. it, it will consume a lot of time and uh, take a lot of time in the rooms and even contributions. Okay. Uh, so, what do you suggest? 
Well, uh, what we are going to learn in the room. Uh, in the room. Can you mute someone. Uh -huh. Sorry, at what we are going to do in the rooms? What we are going to do in the rooms, the fundamentals in the rooms that will come out of the rooms should just be presented because I'm thinking that uh, some people have not acclimatized themselves to Zoom mm -hmm. and they to chew into the time of presentation. Okay. So do we go ahead with the with the group pack or we don't? No, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. All right. Yeah. No okay. problem. Then okay. then I will engage you just all of us in this in this forum, but kindly yes. talk back to me, please. Yeah. If you have an answer, just unmute yourself and, and let's have a proper uh, wholesome discussion. <laughs> So uh, okay. this is okay. So uh, these are some of the questions I had prepared for you for, for the group uh, discussion. Now we are not going to have the group discussions. Uh, now that you're not going to have the group discussions, what do you think? Why is interpersonal relationship important? Anyone? I could say that it reduces conflicts. It reduces conflicts. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Someone else? I want like 10 points. You said one, it reduces conflict. Another one? You can just unmute yourself and let's have a, a discussion. Or you send it to the chat box. Naturally, when we have a good interpersonal uh, relationship, it enhances communication, effective communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. It enhances communication. Another point, please. Or do I pick someone? Arthur. Pick someone. Uh -huh. Arthur, give me a point. Why do you think interpersonal relationship is important? Uh, I haven't addressed my mind to this because I've just joined. But uh, from the top of my mind, what I can say is um, it comes in handy to promote social relationships, mm -hmm. especially when uh, you're interacting with people on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think that is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, interacting with people on a day-to-day -day basis, that is very true. Uh, Asiambo, Cecilia, what do you think? Okay, I can say it, it manages our emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of when you're speaking, you mm -hmm. you react towards your emotions. Yeah. Okay, that is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that also, I think, really comes hand in hand with like, mm -hmm. the, like emotional mm -hmm. uh, Just how to be able to relate well with other people. I see a few uh, comments from the chat box. One is from John. Uh, it is important because it allows for free flow of communication. That is very true. The other one is easy uh, workflow since there, there is understanding. Like Mune Lewana. Then uh, Jacqueline uh, says it enhances cooperation with the, uh, in the team in teamwork. It enhances cooperation in teamwork. Asiambo, just what you've said, it keeps communication lines open. Uh, there are so many who are away. So Huawei mate nine. Why do you think interpersonal relationship is important? Huawei, I see so many Huaweis. Awesome. All right. So uh, let me, uh, uh, common interests and goals are achieved. Uh, thank you so much, Anne. Before we, we cover the next question, which is uh, what are the barriers to interpersonal uh, relationship? Let's see the, the importance that I had listed for you. 
and I hope all of us are able to relate to this. So number one is for personal growth and development. The better or the more you know how to relate to one another, the better it is for you in terms of growth. And that will mean, especially in professional, and I, it's very unfortunate, none of you say they are very good at professional relationship. Because if you know how to handle this customer and tomorrow you know how to handle another customer, then it becomes easier with time. So I would want to give you a challenge that uh, the people who are saying they, they are good at social, uh, let me see who was saying they were good at social. Uh, social, uh, Simba Nakuru, you know, Anne, Helen, uh, Jacqueline, give yourself a challenge that in six months, you want to be good at professional relationship. So that become the, the, the excellent customer service representative. You know, someone walks into your shop and by the time they leave, they feel they have been satisfied, their needs have been met, they have been treated so well that they want to come back again to your shop. So that one for me, I would say it is for personal uh, growth and development. Another reason why it is very important, it's a source of enjoyment. You know, like personally, I like talking to people, kupega to story, you know, and whenever I meet people, whether they are clients or they are professional or social or family or, or they are my friends, I want, to, after I leave that conversation, I live very happy, you know. So, and, and this is to mean that you will enjoy the process of communicating. The other one is it creates a sense of security. When you exactly you know how to interact with any person, at no, at no one point you'll be saying, maybe it's your you know, because if you sell it like that, it means there's a gap or there's a problem somewhere that you don't want to confront. So interpersonal relationship, it creates a security for you. Even people have confidence coming to you and saying, purity, I have this problem, kindly assist me. And they know by the time they say they have this problem, I'll have sorted it out before they leave or we leave each other. So uh, another reason is context of understanding. I know a lot of us uh, have said that it creates a common interest, a common goal, you know, communication lines op uh, are open. There's cooperation within our teams. And that is where the interpersonal skills uh, or relationship comes in. Like there's a level of understanding. Both of you, whether it's the customer to the, to the customer service representative or the customer service representative to the customer, there's also uh, 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 even from your boss, your boss to you or you to your boss, you get my point. So, so it creates a context of understanding. And that is why you keep, even as you continue with this training, you keep me posting and saying, are we together? Just to make sure we are understanding each other. Then the next point is uh, for interpersonal needs. We are humans and we are made up of needs. Like I feel like needs are the biggest uh, common factor among all human beings. Because there's something that you want from someone almost all the time. So for you to have the interpersonal relationship, even within your organization, I know when you have a challenge, you know, you know, you normally know who to call. You, you could be saying, if if Simuzi Konashida, Pigia X and X. Sama Hauna Float, call X and X person will help you. So, so uh, then this means interpersonal relationships are able to, to cover or meet our interpersonal needs. Then the last one is establishing a personal identity. All of us, why do we have a name? Anyone, uh, tell me, why do you think all of us are given a name? Why am I called Purity One Zero? Why are you called Anne? Why are you called Daniel? Why are you called Elizabeth? Coach, please help me. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, the reason why we are given names is for ease of identifications because we are so many. Mm. It's the work of communication very easy 
because the identity is there and this is through our names. True, totally. Thank you so much, uh, Richard, for that. And that is why you'll see, as much as people are given names, when we go to business, we even get more names. Why do you call yourself Loitoktok? Why do you call yourself Chuka? Why do you call yourself Nakuru, Nyeri? It's for easier of identification. So whenever we talk about uh, personal relationships, you cannot separate that concept with identity. And there's a reason we are given names. It's, and it's unique. You know, when you hear Purity Wanjiro and Purity Mwambia, we are two different people, you know. As, as much as we have the very first common name uh, that is the same, but the second name is what differentiates us, you know. And when you, when you say Purity Mwambia, you ask the reporter. Then you hear Purity Wanjiro, you'll be like, the HR. So you see, as much as you could be having identity at level one, the more you break it down, the more identifiable that person becomes. So for me, these are the most common or the, the top reasons or why, why interpersonal relationship is important. Any question up to that point? Before I take you back to our group assignment again, any question? I'll assume there is none. So uh, let us cover the next one. The next question I asked, or I was, that was supposed to be asked in the groups, what are the barriers to interpersonal relationship? Nini nazuia, e interpersonal relationship is equivalent to Nataka. What are the barriers? Arthur, tell me, talk to me. Uh, social anxiety. Social anxiety. Yes. Please elaborate for me or for us. There are some people who are not comfortable mm -hmm. uh, when uh, they are around people. So they find it very difficult to express themselves yeah. or to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, other people might express this in the form of stage fright. For example, mm -hmm. when they give speeches, mm -hmm. they get so anxious that they are unable to pronounce words correctly mm -hmm. or even to express their ideas. Okay, and that is very, very true. Uh, let me pick someone else. I see the chats are coming, but I want to hear someone's voice to really understand. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Muasia. Misunderstanding. Misunderstandings. What do you mean by misunderstandings, Elizabeth? Poor communication. Poor communication. Those are two different points. Misunderstanding and poor communication are two different points. Do you want to explain one of them? Elizabeth? Yes? Which one do you want to explain? Can you hear? All right, let me give another chance to Adiambo, Cecilia. What point do you want to share with us? Okay, Pirit, I can say personality difference. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? It, it may occur when employees lack self-awareness, mm. sens sensitivity and flexibility in that such mm -hmm. behavior undermines teamwork, mm -hmm. which require mutual respect, compromise and negotiation. Yeah, yeah, true. I totally agree with you. And 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 uh, let me give someone else, then I, I go to explaining and also get into the chat box just to see what's happening. Uh, Johnny Neri, Sarah, you have something to say? No. Yeah, low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Come on, you are they, they lack confidence. I want a confidence here to confidence. Uh, some of most of the time attitude when you have bad attitude towards someone or attitude by towards someone. self-esteem. You have given me three different points. You've given me low self-esteem, 
You've given me confidence issues. You've given me attitude issues. I will explain. <laughs> Uh, I want to pick someone else. Uh, Simba in Bondo. Simba Bondo. Okay, Simba in Nakuru. Tim Nakuru, are you there? Okay, I think they are not there. Uh, Wasonga, Caroline. Okay, well, another barrier, barrier to interpersonal relationship could be sensitivity. What? Somebody could be sensitive in that uh -huh. he or she gets hurt at, at the mention of a small thing like like a joke could get somebody somebody hurt or annoyed. Annoyed, okay. Okay, sensitivity. Uh, John Demi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine, give us a barrier. Okay. Language differences. What do you mean? Uh, uh, I mean... Mm -hmm. Interpersonal communication. <laughs> but there's a language barrier, right? Yeah. Does this mean these two people are not speaking the same language? No. What does that mean? Uh, uh, they are speaking different languages. Oh, they are speaking different languages. Yes. All right, thank you so much, uh, John. So uh, just going back to, 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 to the chat box and, and also the point that I've been sharing with our colleagues, as you can see, with inter like with any kind of relationship, there are normally so many barriers. And these barriers are not specific to one group of people. If, if I take the, this team from Simba, I take it to another team. They, uh, recently we did another training with a team called BTL and we asked the same question the probability of getting the same answers is normally very very high that is that is to mean the fact that there are people involved the challenges are almost the same so the very first one that came to our chat box under, under uh, barriers was personal uh, personal identity. I would want to think you, uh, Jacqueline, uh, maybe you meant personality, you know. Oh, I remember, I remember that is not what you, you gave us. No, I'll start from Simba Inakuru, negative ethnic influence. Where is ethnic uh, 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 a barrier? Nakuru? Simba Nakuru? Okay, so from my perspective, I, I would think ethnicity normally is a barrier, either in communication or how one community perceives another community, you know, how uh, that's such that you don't even maybe want to interact uh, with some people from a certain community or the way they talk, maybe uh, Simba Nakuru, you have something to say? Okay, they have muted again. All right. So our uh, ethnic uh, influence normally no would affect our 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 how we interact as people. You know, there are some communities they are very loud, or some nationalities. I will not mention their names. They are very very loud. So you you wonder, are they shouting at me, or this is just how they they normally talk? So that, that one is inferiority complex, where you don't feel like, you feel like you're a lesser person to that person. And this could mean sometimes, I, and I also see this sometimes with myself, when I meet those uh, big corporations, you know, just before you get to the office, you're like, wah, because of how they're regarded either in the society 
or also some sometimes some people who have a lot of money you want you fear talking to them so that is inferiority complex there is uh, the issue of misunderstanding and conflict it could be a barrier to interpersonal relationship, especially if the conflicts have not been resolved. I know we have a topic on conflict management. So I, I, I bet uh, the trainer who will uh, discuss that topic will just show us how to also circumvent uh, challenges that come about with conflict. Then the other one is negative attitude. This is very poor or very bad. For, uh, for people that do your kind of work. Because you see, all of us are customers facing uh, kind of employees. Like our work is interacting or meeting with customers. So when your attitude is not at par, then even how our customers perceive us might not be very correct or very, very good. Then two points from Daniel and Joyce, they say language barrier, that is true. As I, I don't know how common this is in, 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 for example, in cities like Nairobi, Nakuru, Mombasa, but I know the more interior you get uh, out of the major cities, then language now starts becoming a barrier, especially where people maybe don't understand English. They also maybe don't understand Kiswahili as well. That could pose as a challenge, uh, especially when carrying out business. Another one is stress, uh, uh, Jane, thank you for that. And all of us face stress at one point or another. There's a day you go to work, you're like, what? Am I the one who's supposed to be working today? Maybe you feel like you're so stressed. So that is also another barrier. And we'll also have another topic uh, in one of the sessions in future that will be also talking about stress management. So allow me not to divert so much on how to handle stress now and wait for that particular session so that you're able to get all the details. Uh, the next one is attitude and language barrier. That one we've already talked about. Caroline mentioned about sensitivity. You're told something small and it pisses you off. You're like, what? So many And maybe it's just a misunderstanding kind of thing. Then the other one is fear. Either you fear the client or you fear doing something wrong in line of business or in line of duty. That could also hinder you from doing or participating in interpersonal relationship. Then the other one is uh, eye contact, very, very shy. But you can't be doing customer service work and you are shy. Like you need to be able to be looking people into their eyes so that you also don't look like you're lying in the process like just maintain eye contact. But I know some people are not able to maintain eye contact. I'll give you a tip. When you're looking at someone and you don't want to look at their eyes, you either look at their nose or you look at their forehead. They will actually think you are looking at them. The forehead here or their nose here. So if you don't really want to meet their eyes, just focus on the forehead and the nose. Can everyone see my forehead and my nose? Judith, let me throw in some stamina in the work. Huh? Yes, please. In some communities, mm -hmm. looking at somebody eyeball to eyeball is considered disrespect. And in some in some places, it is considered as a person who can be trusted. How do you reconcile if my community tells me that if you look at a senior and elder, that if you look at somebody eyeball to eyeball, mm -hmm. it might be seen as um, very challenging. I think that's a very tricky situation, uh, Richard, because, uh, I, and you see, when you come to corporate, you tell people you have to look people in their eyes, you know, so that you can sell that pitch, they can hear what you're saying, they can understand, you can also know they are hearing you. But as you're saying, if your community does not allow people to look them eye to eye, and maybe you're talking to someone from that community and you're not from that community and you don't know that information, that in, in its own essence, it will create a conflict, whichever way you will want to look at it. Arthur, you have something to contribute. Yes, I, I want to expound a little more on what uh, Richard has said. Yes. Um, I think whether you're looking at someone in the eye or not, mm -hmm. it depends on the context of the communication or conversation. Mm -hmm. For example, if someone was uh, querying you or probing you 
-hmm. you'd want to look them back and straight into the eye so that it portrays you as being honest and uh, straightforward. Mm -hmm. But when, um, when you're talking to an elderly person, now here comes the age factor. When you're talking to an elderly person mm -hmm. or you are greeting them, I think it is inappropriate to look them straight in the eye because it, you'll come across as being disrespectful. I think so too. Yeah. So we should only be uh, like for this, the breaking point is the age. Age and the context of the conversation. <laughs> but what if they're coming to, to buy something from the shop and they're old? What do we do? You, because, because they're coming to buy something from you, you want to look them straight into the eyeballs so that you reassure them that your products are genuine and mm -hmm. you are an honest dealer. Mm -hmm. So again, it all depends on the context of the conversation and what's going on and the transaction. Totally. Uh, anyone else would want to contribute, Richard? Yes, I want to say something. Mm -hmm. What are the, you see, I, I'm looking at uh, eyeball to eyeball communication as um, something to do with confidence. What are the sources of confidence that can give uh, somebody the impetus to, to look at somebody eyeball to eyeball? Eye contact, mm -hmm. that is. Yes. So uh, that's a question, like what will make him become more confident? Yeah, yeah. I think for one, why, how, what will make you very confident is product knowledge. I don't know if we've covered the topic of product knowledge. Not yeah, that was the previous topic. That was the previous topic, that was the previous yeah. topic yes. I feel like the better you know your product, the more confident you become. Your, even a customer kikuliza, isimu umesema ni 15,000, you can easily and comfortably, with a lot of confidence, know what your product is, you know. But when you, you one, you don't know your product, that's a, fear because the, you'll think the customer knows that you don't know what you're selling. So for me, my biggest confidence contributor will be product knowledge. Just know your product end to end, such that even if a, a, an, the most uncertain question is asked, you are able to answer. Uh, is that uh, clear enough, uh, Richard? Yeah, I'm asking on behalf of the many. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. So, Anyone with a reaction on that point of shyness or lack of confidence? All right, let's continue. Uh, another barrier is conflict at the workplace. This normally happens so often. We are human beings. We are prone to kukosana at one point or the other. But interesting enough, uh, we'll also cover, uh, I've, I've said we'll cover the topic of conflict management, especially at the workplace. Just how do we handle such conflicts when they come up? Uh, the other one is talking a lot without listening. And this one we already covered. And we say, listen first before you react. Listen to what the customer or your colleague is saying before you react. Because I feel like if, if we give people enough opportunity to talk everything that they have, they, the same people normally come up with a solution. Have you ever had a customer coming the complaint and saying, Nilena, isi kufanya kazi nini? next time, make sure mumefanya hivi. So they have given you a complaint and a solution. But if you don't give them enough time to, to, to give out their whole complaint, they, you'll cut them off and both of you will be left now in a, in, in a conflict or misunderstanding because the, the client knows or at least thinks they know how to resolve that problem that they are presenting. So uh, another one is lack of participation and lack of open-mindedness. I feel also some of us are very close-minded. It's either our way or not any other way. Jacqueline, you have something to say? Jacqueline, all right, she has muted off. Uh, Jacqueline, you have something to say? Okay, so the other one is gender. We are in the 21st century. I know gender is such a huge barrier. 
some people want don't want to be talked to by women <laughs> but what is all this about gender richard yeah yeah, uh, the, the, the reason why gender can become a barrier to interpersonal relationship is because most some of the people have been tuned. What you just said, uh, that is what they can take from a woman <laughs> and that is what they cannot take from a woman, especially tone variation. Mm. They, they, as uh, lack of respect, lack of... Uh, um, Evaluation, proper evaluation that I'm a man, that uh, this is a woman should not talk to me like she has done. Mm -hmm. So the communication, and also the converse is also true in the sense that some ladies have been inculcated with the spirit that uh, this is how I should talk to a man. And that becomes a self-limiting belief. Mm. So process, it hampers communication. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of empowerment and a lot of unlearning from men. From men, it is unlearning. From mm. the ladies, it is empowerment. Yeah, totally. And and I I think a, a lot of things, as you're saying, it comes from our upbringing. There's something mm. I could have never said in the house. You know, then you grow up, you're like, what? I am still not confident enough to say these things, especially in the presence of men. But now, as you're saying, it has to do a lot with unlearning, especially at the workplace, because I feel like the workplace is very equitable. All of us are in the same level, you know, there's no male customer service representative and there's no female customer service representative. All of us are customer service representatives. So, so, and 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 as you're saying, with time, I, 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 I personally, I have, I normally give myself goals and say, I know, especially when I was starting this company, Accurate, I was not very confident, especially if I was going to do pitches to to boardrooms that men were sitting. I was like, what? You know, then we can have a normal conversation. But now with time, you, you give yourself targets or goals and say, the next time I go to the meeting, I have to sit more upright, you know, or even stand more upright, project my voice, do the eye contact thing as much as now I, I have come to realize in some cultures, people don't do eye contact, but you give yourself goals with time. Then these issues of shyness, uh, lack of confidence, uh, not looking low self-esteem, I think will come down with time. So uh, I feel like we've covered the, a large part of our uh, interpersonal. Uh, Arthur, you want to say something? I just want to ask a question um, on gender being a barrier to interpersonal relationship. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you do when your customer uh, is flirting with you? And uh, obviously they're playing mind games so that they drive the price down. Down, yeah. And Good. So they are messing. They are kind of messing with you. And uh, my question is, how do you get around this? I think uh, one, if one, especially if you are not comfortable with the situation, personally, I'll transfer that customer to another person or another representative. But if I'm still very comfortable with the situation, uh, we have SOPs, and I want to believe you have SOPs. SOPs are standard operating procedures. Like a customer comes, maybe they want to buy a phone. Uh, the price that is written on, on those stickers, maybe it's 15,000, for example. But you know, uh, of the 15,000, the maximum discount you can give is 5,000, for example. Ah, not 5,000, 500 or 1,000 at the very most. So regardless of the, uh, the flirtations or wanting to talk nicely to you, I know others, they even tell you, and you know, there's nothing about calling about your miatano. You chokozi too. So for me, one, if, if I would be, and if that situation would make me uncomfortable, I would want to call someone else to step in and close that deal. But if it's something that I'm still a bit comfortable with it, then I will stick to the 
SOP. I saw someone, uh, Richard, do you have a reaction to that? Well, we, we can become the devil's advocate and the challenge Arthur what he could do by the mere the fact that he knows about flirting with a customer. Yeah. He knows subconsciously how he should respond if he's not comfortable. He can connect that to the standard operating procedures or professionalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Arthur, what do you do? Let us uh, become the devil's advocate. Arthur. Okay. <laughs> what could you do? Supposing there is nobody to be given yeah. that responsibility, mm -hmm. you are the one. Oh. Arthur, that's a question to you. Um, pardon me? We are saying, mm -hmm. yes. We are, we are throwing the challenge back to you. What could you do assuming you're alone and there's no, nobody to delegate that challenge to, what could you do? Uh, yeah, keep it professional, obviously, and um, uh, prioritize the transaction. Mm. Exactly. The business transaction above personal ambitions or, or any other thing, in quotes. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, you, and you, uh, what? what you, Sorry, Richard, continue. You ought to think on your feet. That is why critical thinking, creative thinking mm. are very important because your objective is to sell. Mm. Any uh, objective is secondary to the primary objective. True. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I would want to assume uh, this, that how often does this happen to, 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 this is a question to everyone. Eh? How often does this happen to us? You can just say often, not often, you know. How often does it happen? <laughs> All right, I would assume it happens more often than not. It is so, a standard procedure. <laughs> <laughs> customers okay 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 uh uh it's a standard procedure all right uh let's continue i as as you can see on my screen i'll share this presentation so you can read a bit more into this one. uh personally i had clustered the barriers into different categories but you've given me all of those you know the situational barriers the complexity uh the complexity of uh, complex interactions, just having difficult conversation, long distances, like this training, I, I feel like in an ideal situation, it is us who would have come to you. You know, we do maybe a one day or two day training and cover everything, a lack of time. And this is so common. I'm checking my watch, I'm like, what? One hour, Isha, Isha. Then we're on the, the second hour, or that adverse uh, environmental situations. Uh, maybe Kulinyasha, you are not able to open the shop on time, customers are mad at you, or your colleagues are mad at you, you carry the key home. A uh, high, uh, uh, high density of an individual, just depending how strong they come to you. Uh, then there's personal barriers, fear of rejection, like, uh, and, and this situation are, are related to the flirtations. Like you are afraid if you don't entertain them, they will not buy from you. You know, that's a fear of rejection. Then there's lack of flexibility. As much as you want to give them a 5,000 discount, you can only do 500. Uh, ineffective communication, this one we've really talked about it. Uh, lack of honesty and trust on the part of the customer, I would want to assume. Then uh, the feeling of insecurity, we've talked about insecurity, the issues of low self-esteem, uh, eye contact, confidence, and all those. Then the, the other segment I had uh, divided was as the social cultural barriers. This is cultural diversity, especially if you work in a community where you don't belong. There's the language barrier as well. There's the social, especially that for eye contact. I find it so strange. Then, then there's the ethnic diversity. All right. Uh, let's quickly move on to uh, John from Chuka. You're saying you're not able to see my screen? 
is everyone else able to see my screen? Yeah, maybe okay. you cannot be able to see it. It's at the oh. corner that, yeah. Uh, which corner? No, I'm saying he has to check at the corner that is, uh, he has left. Let him come back, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah. So kindly just leave and then bounce back again. Uh, okay, let's continue to the next topic, uh, developing the right teams. Do you think we make up our right teams? The people in Chuka, the people in Nyeri, the people here in Nairobi, do you think your team is right? And what do we mean by right? Talk to me, talk to me. I think it's easier if I pick someone. I, I feel that is more effective. Anne. Anne. You know, we have to Anne. So we have to Anne when you want. Talk about Jalika, Anne, as their screen name. Anne. Okay, uh, Helen. Helen Migudi, right? Yes. Helen Migudi. Okay. Uh, Simba Karatina. My people from Karatina. That is Geoffrey and Esther. Geoffrey and Esther, please unmute yourself and talk to us. Patrick Chanzu. All right, it looks like no one wants to speak to me. <laughs> Miriam. <laughs> Miriam. Let's see what you have to say. All right, let's continue. <laughs> It looks like you will need to do a lot of confidence building the next time you come. A lot of. <laughs> Asha, yeah. give me something. Purity, I'll talk to you. Um, yes. You want to know what makes the right team, right? Yes. Yes. And also, uh, if you think your team is the right team. Okay. Firstly, I think my team is the right team. Good. Mm -hmm. And uh, on what it takes to build the right team. Mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing is uh, understanding mm -hmm. uh, members and yourself mm -hmm. and their mode of operation mm -hmm. so much that uh, you try to appreciate what they do best mm -hmm. and uh, the other things that they're not really strong at. Mm -hmm. So and this now means that you delegate duties or you assume duties depending on what each member of the team is good at. Okay. Then that is what that is the glue that makes mm -hmm. the teams together and uh, make you achieve your goal as a team. Awesome. I like what Nelly has said uh, mm -hmm. on the sense of uh, positive mental attitude towards building an effective team. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming by positive attitude, she means happiness, joy, mm -hmm. delight. I mean, mm -hmm. cheerfulness. Okay, you can imagine working with a sad person, a person who is perpetually complaining, yeah. a person who is constantly stressed. That mm -hmm. will not be a very effective team to work with, right? Sure. Well, it sure. add to what um, Arthur said on team building. Mm -hmm. One of the most important um, builders of teams is uh, understanding the objectives, the vision, and the mission of that particular team. If you do not understand the mission, the goals, the values of that team, then you will not be able to achieve uh, results very well. True. So I, understanding the goals, mm -hmm. understanding the mission, understanding the, because this is the cement, this is the glue that mm -hmm. brings together. Totally. I, and I agree with you, Richard, and I also agree with Arthur, what you've said on, on the right team. Like, Teams and teams are very dynamic. Immediately after this topic, we're going to talk about uh, group dynamics. Eh? What that means is we are so different and 
so unique. You know, none is the same as the other. Arthur is not the same as John, is not the same as Richard, is not the same as Daniel, is not the same as Elizabeth. All of us are so different. But the uniqueness that we have, I feel like it's what makes us to become a team. Like if 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 she's good with the numbers, unamweka pale mbele kupeana change. You know, if she's good explaining technical things, the technology bit of phones, you put them in that corner. And that is why I really liked what you said, Arthur, when you talk, you said about or you mentioned about delegation. If you are a team of five, I would assume all of us know each other and know our strengths and our weaknesses. So when it comes to work allocation, we, we allocate it based on our strengths and not the other way around. Because I know some teams say, watch out with materials related to Atafanya. You know, when me in, in my own thinking, I will, I will want to give the best person for the job, the job that is best. Okay, so uh, let's see what I had prepared. Uh, so whenever we talk about uh, developing the right team, there's this concept we, we it keeps coming up of on individual development. I feel all of us are work in progress. Like all of us wake up every day with a purpose to to become better, to grow. You know, I will not want or I will not want to think someone at customer executive level, they will want to remain there for the rest of their life. I would want them to have a purpose and say, in five years, I want to be a customer service experience manager. You know, something good because it shows with time, if, if in 10 years I'll have grown, the number of people I'll have impacted along the way, there'll also be many. So our, so our IDP, IDP is Individual Development Plan. I, an IDP is a tool or it's a, it's a system, or it is, what do I say? It is a mechanism to help employees grow. And, and this one, you can do it by yourself. You have your own individual development plan. And at this point, I want to pause and ask a question. Do we have any development plans for ourselves? And if you say yes, you tell me which one. What do you want to grow in or what do you want to develop? Anyone? You can also put it on the chat box. I feel like you're more confident in the chat area than, <laughs> than in the talking area. So do you have a, 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 an individual plan for growth or for development? You can just say yes, I'm a no. On the chat box, please. Let me see five, feedback from five people, then I continue. Uh, Nelly says, I have a poor reception. I don't know if it is my end or your end. It's on and off. Is everyone able to comfortably hear me? Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah. OK, so Nelly, I will advise you to just uh, leave the, the call and then come back again and see if you are, you'll be able to, to, to get the, the stream much clearly. Okay. Okay, thank you, Nelly. Uh, see you shortly, just leave and then come back. I'll want to assume, I've asked this question and, and no one has answered me, whether we have our own plans to grow or develop, either in our careers or in our social life or in, in our religious life, we were talking to another group and I asked them the same question. Some people were telling me, I want to read the Bible twice in a year, like from Genesis to Re Re Revelation, two times in a year. I'm like, what? So you'll be reading the Bible every day then. <laughs> so these are some of the goals that people have either at their, at their personal level or at, at career level, you know, at family level, someone will say, I want to have a child in the next two years. I want to, to, to go on vacation, maybe to Dubai in the next one year. Those are personal goals and plans. And why we call them goals or plans is you need to do something to get to them. But for today, I'll focus more on career plans. Like what will make you a better employee? What will make you a better 
customer relations executive what will make you a better sales person what will make you a better marketing person or uh, or a, a marketing uh marketing uh which one am i looking for a marketing practitioner you know said that whenever you go to make those deals you actually close them so the, the main purpose of idp is to help employees reach short and long-term career goals as well as, as improve on their current uh, job performance. So uh, let me, uh, I don't know how, if any of us have met this formula, it's called the 70-20-10 rule. I will not ask that question. I know you'll not answer me. So I'll just continue. <laughs> so the 70-20-10 rules, normally states that 70% of our learning happens at the workplace. I know a lot of young people, especially, they are very keen on going back to school. What plan do you have with your life going back to school? What plan do you have with your life going back to school? Do a diploma, do a certificate, do a degree, do a master's. But from this formula, what it means or what it states that 70% of learning, it normally happens at the workplace. It doesn't happen at school. It doesn't happen anywhere else. It happens at the workplace. That's when you can really grow and develop yourself. Then the next percentage, which is 20%, normally happens through coaching and mentorship programs. And I feel so nice whenever I see uh, Richard calling, uh, saying he's a coach, then I feel like your organization is well covered. The fact that you have a coach on site, unlike some organizations where you have to get a coach from outside to come and coach the people. So 20% normally happens through coaching and mentorship. How many of us have coaches or mentors? How many of us have coaches or mentors? Or do you have a coach? Do you have a mentor? That's a question. Give me answers on the chat box. I'll, I'll have a look at them as we go on. So if you have a coach or a mentor, just say yes. And thank you so much that you have a coach and a mentor or a mentor. And you see, hey, Coach Richie says he has both, which is very recommendable. And that is why he's very knowledgeable in a lot of things. Uh, yes, Simba Karatina, you say yes. So you see, and whenever you go to talk to your coach or your mentor, please note that is only 20% of learning. So, and you see that space now becomes very, very small. We have learned a lot from our workplaces at our jobs. Then we've talked to someone who is either a coach or a mentor. They have, they have taught us another 20%. And the least part is the 10%, which we call formal training. And that is why I feel sometimes very, I feel bad for people. Whenever you tell them, what are your career goals? The first thing they will tell you is go back to school. When we exactly know going back to school is only 10% of, uh, of learning. So from this point, do we agree or disagree with this formula? Purity. Yes, please. I, I totally admire the formula. Uh -huh. You know, one of the things I encounter even in professionals, yes. even highly qualified uh, professionals, mm -hmm. is to differentiate between coaching and uh, mentorship. What, yes. what creates the difference between coaching and mentorship? All right, thank you, uh, Richard. The difference between coaching and mentorship is coaching is very targeted and very short term. So you'll say, I'm going to see a coach for the next six months. And, and that coaching relationship, it has objectives. What are you going to see this coach about? For example, if you're not good at creating PowerPoints, like the one I'm using, I'll want to speak to someone who I admire based on the PowerPoint they create. And they tell me, Purity, I can only sit down with you for two weeks. Then you should be able to be up to speed with, with you doing your presentation. That is coaching. 
very short term, very targeted, very specific. Like there's a reason you are going to meet and talk. Unlike for mentorship, mentorship by Nanga deadline, it's long term. You, you can have a, a mentor for five years, 10 years, 20 years. And with mentoring, it's very valid. Any topic is a topic of discussion. You know, this mentor maybe could be a professional. So today you're talking uh, matters, customer service, Kesho, you have a sick child, you call them and ask them, and you see, <laughs> you can't do the same for a coach because a coach is very targeted and very short term. Another one, with mentorship, it's the mentee that approaches the mentor. You've had people come and telling you, I want you to be my mentor. Well, with coaching, it's the other way around. It's the coach that approaches the coachee. The coach tells you, I think or I feel there's something missing in your work. Let's have a sit down and see how best I can help you develop these skills I feel like you're lacking. So for the two, uh, for differentiating between a coach and a mentor, those are the two most conspicuous differences. The duration, the specificity. Coaching is very specific. Mentoring, you can actually discuss about everything everything and anything. Then the approach. With coaching, it's the coach that approaches the coachee based on their relationship. And, and at, at professional circles, I find like coaching works more than mentorship. You know, have I answered your question, uh, Richard? Yeah, you have. Huh? Thank you very much. Coaching is very thought provocative. You are provoked within that specific period Yes. So that you can become what you didn't expect to become. Let us say, for example, mm -hmm. you want to, to, what should I say? Do mountaineering and you're afraid of. A coach yes. gives you yes. strategies becoming mm. a good mountaineer mm. so that maybe you gain courage, you gain certain skills so that you are able to overcome certain gaps that you have. While mentorship, uh, it mm -hmm. is sometimes seniority-based, sometimes mm -hmm. you um, not have very strict relationship, but in coaching, you know, sometimes in coaching, you, you, you have to pay. Yes. So you, you develop that skill that you're lacking. But mm -hmm. in the mentorship, I said, oh, purity, let us meet in a restaurant. You tell me how to do this and that. But yeah. in, in coaching, if you waste time, you are the one to lose. Yeah, true. Totally. I agree with you, Richard. And I hope that the same difference uh, is now clear to the entire team. So that's that if I if I was if I were to ask the question again, do you have a coach or a mentor? I know a lot of us will move to mentors now that we know the differences. And very few of us have coaches because you see, coaching is very short term, very targeted, very result oriented. So the question is again, do you have a coach or a mentor? I know Nelly, you had said both, but now she has changed. It is a mentor. <laughs> yeah, now you can see that uh, that differentiation is really a problem. Yes. So you see, and, and whenever you go and tell someone, can you be my mentor? That means that relationship will not be very formal. But when, the, when, when someone maybe a bit superior than you at the workplace comes and tells you, I want to show you something, that is coaching. You know, they're trying to make you get to know what you're not good at within a very short period of time. So uh, that is uh, on team development or, 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 or uh, developing the right teams. So you see, even when you get a new employee, let me uh, talk about this a bit. When you get a new employee, try to use this, this formula and say, this employee will only get up to speed if we train them on the job. discount as you go. Then once once you train them on the job and and, and identify whether if there's a problem or they're not meeting expectation, then you can decide do I use the coaching uh, do I now introduce coaching? and train them on very, very specific things. And during this relationship, that's when even the, the, the new employee might tell you, 
I want you to be my mentor to help to guide me around this, uh, just not getting to know my job better. Then the very last bit, like this training we are doing is a formal training. You know, you have to sit down for two hours, listen, do assignments and all that for two hours. And you see, this formal training is very short term, six Saturdays and we are done. Whether umeshika mojashika, we are done. You know, you are ready for graduation. So this normally works for corporates and I would want to encourage you every time you especially interact with a new employee joining your team, you want to develop them to be right for that team, then use this formula, okay? All right, managing group dynamics. Who knows anything about group dynamics? I know I had earlier mentioned it. And, and Adair, where are you? And Adair? Well, all right, I can assist Anne Adair as she formulates her mind. Uh -huh. Group dynamics are the changes of fluidity or uh, flexibility, or the variations within groups that uh, manifest themselves as time goes by. So the, generally speaking, dynamics is uh, the flexibility, agility, and um, uh, the various changes, variations that occur within a group. Mm -hmm. the, the, even conflict is a, an indicator of group dynamics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Differences is an indicator of group dynamics. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Richard, for that. Who else has a, a contributing point for group dynamics? Kapsabet, can I be your mentor? If you don't have a mentor, but that's now you have to speak to me so that I know how your voice sounds. Kapsabet, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a mentor, I'm more than willing to be your mentor. Yes, Atta. I think uh, the term group dynamics des simply describes how people within a group relate to one another, mm -hmm. how you interact, how you communicate, mm -hmm. how you go about achieving the set of objectives of the group. Mm -hmm. All right. How you communicate, how you, you achieve set objectives. That's very true. I want to hear from a lady. Uh, Evelyn, is it Evelyn or Eileen? Together with Helen, I see Irene. Any of you, Jacqueline? Adiambo, uh, Cecilia? What do you think about group dynamics? Cecilia, I'm asking, what do we think about group dynamics? Kapsabet Ameniruka, Amesema, we are our own mentors. Yes, Sarah, talk to me. <laughs> group dynamic, I think, uh, group communication. Group communication, eh? Yeah. All right. So uh, let me dive uh, right into it. Group dynamic, as I, I had already said earlier, this is a very philosophical uh definition to group dynamics but let me just break it down to our own level group dynamic means all of us are different but this difference that we have is what makes us stronger as a group you get my point all of us are different all of us have different capabilities all of us are unique in our own way but when we bring all these differences together is what makes us, our group become stronger. And, and I normally see this with a lot of organizations whenever I talk to them and ask them, who is the strongest link within your group? They tell you, so and so, kama hayuko, hatufungi yo biashara leo. You know, because they know this is good at this, uh, this person A is good at job A, person B is good at job B, person C, D, E, F, they are good at jobs E, C, D, E, F, and it's only by bringing all these people together that we'll, uh, we are able to make that work happen. So 
this uh, example, are, no, this definition, if you're able to read it, it's very big, but it just tells you that all these people who are able to do different roles, they have different behaviors. When they come together, they make that team whole. Why do you think? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, uh, as the definition has been given by Purity, mm. group is the appreciation of our diversity. We have really? different. For those who, who love football, I don't like it. Premier League. There are those <laughs> who there are those who supply. There are mm -hmm. those who defend. But these diversities or differences contribute to the group's excellence. Yes, totally, and that is true. And 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 you'll find some people. Some people will say, "Yeah, I like working alone," but I don't believe that saying. I don't think anybody, as much as you like working alone, I don't think you can achieve that job wholesomely by doing that job alone. So uh, let's see. And as you can see, this concept of group dynamics was introduced long, long, long time ago, 1940. How many of us were born? <laughs> None, I think so, or I would want to assume. So I had already created another group work, but now we've agreed will not to use group works. So we'll just have open uh, discussions. Yes, Kapsabet, Umojani, Guvu. Hey, Kapsabet, Umeni Ruka. And I was ready to volunteer to be your mentor. But I still need to be your mentor. I, I can do something in your life that maybe you are not ready for. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I asked a question and I want you to answer me either by talking to me or just giving me answers on the chat box. What are some of the challenges facing group dynamics? Nishidagani Hizi, if we come together as a group, what are some of the challenges we face? Or what are some of the problems we face? I give you one minute to type. Now I want answers from everyone. Because I believe all of us are operating in groups. Eh? So what are these challenges? What are these problems? What are these obstacles we face when we are working as a group or as a team? First off, if, as they type, I can say one of the challenges of uh, group dynamics is uh, how to resolve differences. Most of us, because we have differences, we should become enemies. Oh, OK. Having perspective or something will translate into becoming enemies. It shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Actually, it shouldn't. Like, if we have a difference or we don't agree on a point, that is not the recipe for becoming enemies. Actually, it should make us better friends because now I know what you don't like, you know, or what you will not normally agree with me. So I, I see uh, John from Nyeri. I'm expecting from all others. So I hope everyone is busy typing. A different perspective, point of view of individuals in a group. Just, I think exactly as uh, Richard has said, the fact that you're not able to see eye to eye or even agree, that makes now the group become a bit difficult to, to, to be in, even to manage in, you know, uh, then uh, Steve Chuka says competition can be a challenge. Is this internal competition or external competition? Steve, Steve from Chuka, are you able to hear me? Are you able to speak to me yes. also? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, please. Can you explain to me what do you mean, you mean by competition? Internal competition. Internal competition. All of us want to get ahead. <laughs> <laughs> is that the case? Uh, Steve? Yeah, 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 yeah. All of you, yeah, when you're competing, eh? mm -hmm. can be a challenge. Sorry, I can't hear you clearly. What are you saying? Hey. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey. Mm -hmm. When there's a internal competition, uh -huh. when everyone wants to work together. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Internal competition. And, and, and I know this could be so bad sometimes because, especially for salespeople, you know, 
and and I, I want to believe many or most sales jobs are also commission-based jobs. So depending on how much you sell, it also means you'll take as much home. So I would also want to assume competition now becomes very stiff. And maybe this one is very common. I keep hearing, umenibi a customer. Uyo alikuwa customer wangu. Kwa nini hauku niambeve ni alikuja? Then they answer you, ulikuwa wapi wakikuja? So I, I think that one will actually create our, 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 now that becomes a challenge, the competition bit. And now makes you working maybe that team a bit difficult. Uh, France is yeah. lack of transparency and trust. Is this within the group or with the external people? I think it will be within the group. Eh? <laughs> that is interesting. Eh? Uh, Francis, Nzuki, are you able to hear me? Not very heavy. Francis? Something. Francis? All right. Okay, uh, another one is different education background. Why will education become a challenge in a group? Like when you when you are mesoma na jono mesoma sana. Sindi o. Ati sana. So another round what when you are to diploma na certificates. That should not be the case, actually. Uh, another one is individual experiences and knowledge. Some people think they know more than others. That's in a group will, will actually become a problem. Inferiority, especially if you don't feel like you belong to that group, or your ideas or your what you say what you tend to. I think that also become a challenge in a group. Uh, differences in ideologies, yes, thinking points. All of you are not being able to see eye to eye. Low engagement. Uh, I oh, I'll still want to believe this is within the group since now we are talking about uh, group uh, dynamic. Uh, not sharing information. information and That could be uh, a problem also. Lack of trust. People not being able to trust each other within the team. Experience is the right word. Uh, I think that one is like if if you come, for example. I don't know how true is this. If you've ever worked in Nairobi, what when Nairobi na kwanga na kimbelebele sana, you know. <laughs> so if they go to a Ushango setup, they they are the people who think they know everything, you know. Uh, we've talked about lack of trust, little or no transparency. This is very serious. Uh, low engagement and different work. I know in, in the future. Uh, session in about two weeks or so, we'll talk about work ethic. And you see, uh, work ethics are different from one person to another. The way I would interpret this as work ethic, someone else would not agree with it. Thank you so much for your feedback. And now I want to post the same challenge back at you. What do we do to improve group dynamics? What do we do? Answer my friend, as people are busy typing uh, what we can do to, to improve the work dynamics, Asa, talk to me. What can we do to improve work uh, group dynamics? John Demi, uh, talk to me, please. Uh, Purity, I think I should go first, yeah? Okay, please. Thank you. Uh, to improve uh, group dynamics, mm -hmm. I think we be more tolerant with one another, more understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think that summarizes my whole point. Tolerance. Tolerance and understanding. Tolerance and understanding. Tolerance and understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, John Demi, where are you? You are talking before Arthur. Uh, Sarah, please, what can we do to improve group dynamics? It's uh, respect. A what? First, you should, should have respect and uh, respect to each and to everyone. Okay, to have respect to everyone. Someone else? Yeah. If you have not talked, just unmute your mic and talk to me. Caroline Wasonga. 
What can we do to improve this group dynamics? Atiambo, Cecilia, you want to talk? Yes, we should, we should define roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Define roles and responsibilities. Uh -huh. Give me another point. Tackle problems as they quickly come. with good feedback. <laughs> yes. Tackle problems <laughs> as they come. Uh -huh. You have another point, Cecilia? No. All right. Thank you so much, Cecilia. Someone else? Talk to me. Talk to me. Focus on communication. Focus on communication. Eh? Thank you, John Demi. Karitana. Uh -huh. Someone else? Give me your ideas as you type. Ukishindo kuangia uzi ya kwa chatbox so that you can cover all of them. Okay. All right. As, as, as I discussed this, uh, let us also uh, see what you've sent on the chat box. Number one is personal commitment to group work. All of us, I think that is a very key point, Jacqueline. Eh? All of us have to be committed to our group because when it comes to, to, to work, we are not working for ourselves. We are working for that organization. You know, we are working for Simba as a whole. It's not even Simba Loi Talk Talk, it's Simba as a whole. So all of us need to have that personal commitment to group work and say, this is our shop and we have to make our shop excel so that also the bigger company or the larger company also excels. Then the other one is be accommodative and avoid judgment. Very true. The fact that we have said we are all different that means this diversity, we also bring it to work. And if I'm different from you, you need to one, accept my difference, and I also need to accept your difference and avoid judgment in between. Avoid making comments and say, you behave like this because you come from this, for example, this community, or you behave like this because you've not done your degree. So just avoid basic, judgments that normally come as a result of our diversity. Then Zach, uh, you said, listen more than talking. Why, why did God give us two ears and one mouth? That would mean we listen twice as much as we, we talk. Neon, Neon, you want to say something? Neon, we can't hear you. All right, I'll continue. Uh, as Yambo Cecilia says, we need to focus on communication. And why do you think we started this uh, training with a communication class? Because I feel like everything starts and ends at communication. And communication needs to be complete. Once you, once someone uh, sends information to you, you also need to send feedback back to them. So that it is a continuous journey. So you, you and, and that information cycle should be complete. Uh, let me see if I'm able to, to, to show you something or to show something up. Uh, okay, let's see. Yes, whiteboard. Uh, you're able to see my blank screen. So normally here is the sender. They send information to a receiver. There's a receiver here. Uh, pardon my handwriting. Uh, there's a receiver there. So what they send here is the message. Are we able to see what I'm, I'm drawing? Yes. Then there is feedback here. You see, if, if this was a circle, ideally this should look like this. Okay? So ideally, if, 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 if this was a circle, this is the message, this is the feedback, here is the sender and receiver. 
this is a circle and this means this is a complete circle. Are we together? So once someone sends you information, you also need to send feedback back to them. And this feedback could be either in agreement, you're agreeing to what they uh, agree, or uh, agree, oh, sorry. Uh, where, 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 where? Yes. Either you are agreeing, you agree, or you are asking for clarification. And clarification will be, what did you mean when you said, uh, when you sent this information? You know, I did not understand what you are saying. So for me, communication needs to be complete. Whether we are working as, as a group or as a team, communication normally or ideally needs to be complete. Are we together? All right, let's continue. Uh, Spirit, you, yes, please. I have a question. Uh, you, on uh, feedback, you've only mentioned agreement, clarification. What about disagreement? That is where the clarification bit comes. Like you say, I don't agree with you. What did you mean? You know, what, like, sorry? My question is, what if you understood mm -hmm. the message? Just oh. don't agree outright today. Oh, it's the agreeing part that you did not agree with. Yeah, you just don't, if you understood the message, you just don't agree with it. Okay, so I think here, uh, you, I hope you are able to see my screen again. Here you yeah. disagree and give another solution eh? or a suggestion, either solution okay. or suggestion. Is that okay? Thank you, thank you. Yes, because I don't think we, we can always agree all the time. You know, yes. we, we always have room for disagreement. And when we disagree, you just don't say, I don't agree with you. You say, I don't agree with you, but I think we need to do this. You know, then from there, now that, that information cycle starts again, they tell you, by the way, you are correct. Ama atae, they don't also agree with you and tell you, but I still don't agree with you. Let's try this again. Then that information has gotten to you. You say, uh, I think what you're saying is reasonable. Or you say, I still think what you're saying is not correct. Let's, like this communication cycle, it is continuous until all of us get to a point of agreement. Because and uh, and uh, that brings me to my question. What mm -hmm. if you agree with, with them, they also don't agree with you, and this information has gone full circle more than once, and you guys are still at an impasse now. How then do you resolve this conflict? If that's Can the I case, yes, please, Richard. When you have a conflict within a certain level and you are not able to come to a conclusion, there is a particular way you can escalate. Within the organization, there are hierarchies. You know, maybe the head of department or the the regional manager, the regional coordinator, if that cannot be resolved within that level, then you can escalate it to uh, the edge of department or human resource or even to the GM, because it can mm -hmm. continue. I mean, there is no solution to it. Then there's the final authority within the organization to make a decision. True, I totally agree with you. And that is what I was actually going to say. Like, if, if that this cycle becomes so, cyclical again, you need to introduce another party, you know, a more neutral or independent party. And that could come from an escalation matrix. And escalation, maybe you report to the head of the region, the head of the region maybe reports to someone, the country director or someone. So, and, and as you escalate, I think based on their wisdom or experience, they can say, this is based uh, on my experience, this is how this situation needs to be resolved or based on how we understand our business, this is how this needs to be addressed. Is that clear? Yes, thank you. Mm. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's continue. And I also see time is not really now on our side. Uh, pay attention. Yes, clues. I think before someone gets upset with you, 
they are closed, like when Akwanyesha too, then break down the barriers. If there are any barriers, just break them down. I, I think it's Cecilia, Cecilia for that. And then defining roles and responsibilities. Let everyone know exactly what they ought to be doing at the workplace. Uh, Joyce, you've already, uh, we've already discussed about paying attention. Coming to a conclusion on majority ideas is in a sober way, you know, without catching feelings. I feel like this is work. Let's not take it personal. You know, when someone says something about us or about the organization, I feel they are saying it from a good place and they, they want to do it for the betterment of that particular organization. Then uh, the next point is coming to uh, that one I've already read. Uh, nearly appreciating one another. This, I can't overstate it. When someone does something good, appreciate them. The same way you are very willing and ready to rebuke them when they are not, they don't do something good. Be an instant appreciator. Someone comes early to work, you're like, Dalo mekuja mapema, good job. Let's do this again tomorrow. Or something else, you know, maybe they're balancing books. Uh, when you were studying, someone was balancing books in Loi Talk Talk. Once you do a good balance, you're like, and you've done a very good job. So uh, boost morale of one another. I think that one normally comes from the appreciation. Uh, delegate and build and guide to build. Uh, we have a whole session on delegation. I think so. I'm not so sure about that, but I hope we do so that we are able to cover that topic. Uh, Caroline, you, uh, Caroline, you say understanding is key. This one we've already discussed. Uh, accountability as well. Everyone to be responsible and take accountability, whether they did something good or something wrong. Also have some fun and maintain trust. Uh, and also don't think you know it all. All of us are not geniuses. You know, we have room. Even, to... yes, even if you are genius, purity, yes. even if you are genius, geniuses are focused on a particular area of life. They do not know the whole circle of knowledge. They are narrow, they are vision holes. So nobody is an island of wisdom and intelligence. That is why there should be some common ground where you can agree. True. I totally agree with you, Richard. So uh, let's quickly move to PR, public relations. Do you want a minute to stretch out? How about Malizia? <laughs> to Malaysia, to Malaysia, to Malaysia. To Malaysia. Those, are, those are very strong people. Na kulanga maindi na maziwa. Mutu kama hata na kula kukumzima. Eh? All right. Uh, public relations is how we interact with the public. And the public, when we say public, now for your case, is the customers that come through your shop. You know, like anybody who comes through those doors is public. And how you relate with them, and uh, how you re relate with them, is, that process is what we call public relations. And, and, and public relations uh, in its own definition is the flow of information from within the organization to outside the organization. You already know this is Nokia, I don't know if Nokia still produces phones today. You know, this is techno. I see a lot of techno here, so I'll use techno as an example. You know, this is techno uh, Y9. I want to assume there's a Y9 techno. Uh, techno Y9, these are the features. You see, that is information that you only know as an organization. But once you take it to, to a customer, then that, that process of transferring information from the organization to an outsider of that organization is what we call PR. And PR, uh, uh, there are so many stakeholders or the people that require this information that are outside your organization. This could be the public itself, the customers, the investors, the partners, the employees. Because if, if Simba in Shuka and Simba in Nyeri, uh, do you have Simba in Embu? Do you have an Embu branch? Someone talk to me so that I can give this example I want to give. 
No, we don't. We have in Nyeri. Mm -hmm. We have in uh, we don't have four. Okay, let's say Simba in Nakuru and Simba in Nairobi. Yeah? For Simba in Nairobi to, to, to talk or to share information with Simba in Nakuru, that is public relations because they have now taken information from one shop to the other shop. That is where the relationship uh, or the employee to employee comes in when you talk about public relations. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, when you talk about public relations, remember this for, 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 for words. Eh? There, it's an acronym. Ideally, you'll call it race, 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 kama ya kukimbia, eh? But R stands for research. You need to research the information that you want to share with your customers or the, the public. Then you have to take an action. What action are you going to do with it? Once you decide on the action, then you, you communicate. Now you start spreading that action. Then finally, it's evaluation. Did the customer or did the public accept or receive your information as you had earlier intended for it to be received? If not, then we go back to our, our communication cycle. You start all over again. You research for more information, you decide on an action, you, you communicate, and then you evaluate. So uh, moving quickly, this, uh, this is the functions of PR. Function is to mean in your PR. Why, do, why are we doing all this PR work? This is the, uh, this is the purpose of why we do PR work. One is promoting goodwill. Goodwill is, is what to do ku, 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 to buy in into your product and services. Because if they buy from a Simba shop in Nairobi, I want to, to assume that if they go to Nakuru and they know that you have a shop in Nakuru, they will start asking, where is Simba Telecom in Nakuru? That is goodwill. Like they want you to excel or succeed in your business. Then the next one is promoting product service and corporate image. Today, the fact, today if you say we are a direct distributor of Safaricom, people will trust you more than just saying we are a distributor of Safaricom. The fact that Ukiongeza Patujina direct, it changes the whole conversation. Then the next one is corporate communication. Whenever you, you, you are discussing or you're talking with the public, you want the information coming from the organization to be the same. So and so customer say, but Niliambi were heavy in this Simba Telecom shop. Standardization, like, right? Yes, standardization. Like all information that come that is coming from your organization is the same and it is uniform, you know. Uh, the next one is lobbying. Lobbying is like getting buy-in, you know. I'll use the same example as, as I've used for point two. By saying you're a direct distributor of Safaricom, you're lobbying for customers. They know they don't necessarily need to go to a, a Safaricom and Safaricom and shop. They can actually walk into Simba Telecom and they are, they are, they are, they are, <laughs> the problems they had or, or Mashida or Likwanas or they get sorted the same way they would have worked into any Safaricom. Uh, customer service shop. Then we also use it to counteract or 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 uh, counteract is go against. Eh? Counteract is dispute or negative publicity. Maybe you could hear someone saying, "Hey, Simba Telecom Niwezi," or the ways we say Safaricom Niwezi. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that is negative publicity. But you can say sour. But but I know Simba Telecom. I know the employees. I know how they talk to us. They treat us well. Those are not characteristics that wazy, for example. Ah, those are functions of PR. Uh, hey, today I had given you so many group works, but let me rush to uh, the solutions. Uh, what are some of the advantages of PR? I had already listed them down. The most critical one is credibility. Credibility is 
people believe in you. You know, people trust in you. People trust on your product, on your service, on your employees. They believe you if you tell them, Techno Y9 is the best phone in Kenya. They will not dispute. That is the work of PR or an advantage of PR. Another advantage of PR is cost. You'll find PR normally saves a lot of corporates, a lot of costs. The fact that you, you have a good name out there, you don't necessarily need to keep promoting your name or your brand. The work of PR, and you see PR, it's not the billboards or, or the radio adverts or the TV adverts. PR is how you interact with these customers when they visit your shop. You know, they, you come, you look excited, you look happy, you're like, welcome. That is PR. You know, it doesn't have to be so out there for, for it to be called PR. The next one is avoidance of clutter. What is clutter? Clutter is the unnecessary things. You know, the udaku that is happening, the gossip, all these bad things that, are, uh, that normally happen to corporates. When you have a good PR, it removes those, that negative energy, you know. Then the next one is lead generation. Have you ever had, like, if you treat a customer right, they tell three people. If you treat a customer wrong, they tell 10 people. So yeah, you yeah see, before the... <laughs> sorry? <laughs> before, before the truth puts on shoes, Yes. Rumor has gone around the world and, Far and beyond. <laughs> yes. But you see, now we rely on the on our work of PR to help us uh, get lead generation. Lead generation is we are now able to reach customers that ideally will not have reached. Because if I visit your shop, you treat me right, and my friend is in town and tells me purity. What will I tell them? And uh, and that's in my telephone on uh, which street are you on? Which street is Simba Telecom? I, I keep forgetting. We are and on, on Wabera Street. We are on, on, on Loiter street. street. On Loiter Street, you know. So if you tell me, uh, I'm looking for a phone, then you know, John Ozanga genuine phones. Even if I know maybe yours are not genuine, I'll still say, go to Simba Telecom on Loiter Street or on Wabera Street. That is the work of PR. The people or the customers who you will not ideally meet in an ordinary situation, they are now brought closer to you. That is lead generation. Then is can we call can we call it um, referrals? Lead generation. Yes, referrals. Yes, you can also call it referrals or recommendations. You know the fact that I tell someone visit that shop. What I could sort. O connection na safari com line eh ingia tu apo simba telecom. Akuli zetu na simba telecom ni nini? What what do you think I'll say next? Ah, sinio madilas wa safari com. What I could sort. So PR work has done a lot of advertising and talking on your behalf, which is a good thing. But imagine that customer was not satisfied. At a moment, eh, you know, just in the telecom, like in it, a bit of to shopping, you know. You see, and that is and, uh, the same thing that customer, if they talk to another person within the one hour, I'm going the same question. Where can I get a phone? I'm going to get a phone, telecom, like in it, I'm serious. That is good PR and bad PR on the other side. You get my point. Uh, the other one is ability to reach specific groups. For example, if you are targeting maybe university students or or the, uh, or uh, I see like Loiter Street and Wabera Street have, have a lot of working class. Eh? Maybe that is the, the, the target group that you want to target with phones that maybe are not very expensive. Uh, but they're also very classy, very unique, uh, very, in terms of function functionality, they're able to do more functions. And like another shop maybe that is located downtown. Do you have a shop in downtown? No, we don't. We only have a long Wabera where we have Matakarua shopping, Lawyer Kenyanjui. <laughs> you see. Moi has an office up there. Uh, Moi Avenue? Oh, uh, uh, no, the, no, no, no. Let's no. present Moi. No, no, the sun. <laughs> oh, the sun. So, 
so you see, and you see, why why have you placed those shops that they're very strategic? I would want to think because there's a certain clientele that you're focusing on. Unlike in Maua, I'll be interested to find out where in Maua the shop is located because maybe you are again you are targeting another specific group of people. Then the other one is image building. PR helps us build an image. You know, like when you walk, you walk with a lot of pride. When someone asks you, Unafanyanga job wapi? You are quick to say, I work at Simba Telecom. How many of us are confident to say where we work? I am confident to say that I work in Simba, personally. How many of us are confident to say where we work? John. Me, John, yeah, yes, I'm very confident. Very confident, eh? Yes. So, Lisa, Nata Karibu Seme, I work at Safaricom. Apana, Simba Telecom. And you see, that is what PR does to us. If, if I meet someone wearing the red t-shirt, uh, the red shirt, I think you, you, your corporate color is red, right, Richard? Yeah. Yes, ukivayo red unachambea tao na apo kando imeandikwa in gold. It's written in gold, right? The, the name Simba. I, I am colorblind, but uh, I know it is very well written. <laughs> okay, it is yeah, written we... in gold. So when you walk in town, you're like, wow, I work for, for Simba. Uh, and take the day and, and Simba Bondo was telling us they are very confident that they work for Simba. Then uh, let's see the uses of uh, PR as we are winding up. Even indulge me for another maybe 15 minutes, I should be done. Eh? Yeah. Uh, uh, one is to handle customer complaints and redresses, how we handle them and how we address the complaints. Uh, another use is, is it gives us an opportunity to cement relationships with our customers. Now, now customers become family, they stop being customers. Another point, uh, it, it's very important. It helps us in the service industry. Like your industry is service and hospitality. However you want to look at it, there's a lot of hospitality that goes on with, with customer centric or customer focused uh, businesses. Another one is combating rumors and falsehoods. Uh, another one is confront and disclose facts in, meeting, uh, in leading media. So uh, like the same example I was using that people say Safari company Wazy. Then you have to give facts of why it's your Wazy or why to justify what they normally do. Uh, then give the positive side of the story. Always, whenever you are countering a rumor or a falsehood, you have an opportunity to give the positive side of that story. Uh, you can also capitalize on rumors to your benefit. I had an example for this, but it might take a while before I show you. So let's just keep it. Uh, I think when I'm sharing the notes, I can send the link of that, how this organization used capitalize the rumors that were going on about the organization. Then uh, rumors can be dismissed as ridiculous. When people know more about you, even when they hear a rumor, they'll say, ah, you're too new, Wongo. That is just shenanigans that are going on. All right. Uh, disadvantages of PR. PR is hard work. Nikazingumu, you have to put the work, the effort, the energy. That is the disadvantage. To retain or even maintain a name, it takes a lot of, a lot of work into it. And then uh, another disadvantage of PR, there's lack of control. You can't really tell what is, what is good and what is bad. Like the, the line becomes very thin because for that organization, I'm telling you that they used rumors for their advantage. I feel the balance was very thin. At any point that rumor could also have turned against them, you know. Then another disadvantage, you can't quantify the work of PR. You can't say, Leo, to mefanya at 90% or 100%. The fact that it is continuous, then it doesn't have a metric to say, today we performed four out of five in PR. The fact that it is continuous, it's ongoing, it's all the time. You don't take a break from PR. 
Then the last bit, it needs skillful management. Like people have to be trained. Like the training we are doing for you today, it's just to be able to fill those small, small gaps on how we treat our customers, you know. And by the end of the day, when, when a customer comes, you greet them excited, that is PR. However you are doing it, that is PR. Uh, I'd like to cover the last bit in another maybe five minutes or so. Or do you have any questions on PR up to the point I have reached? Any questions? I would assume none. Ask me on the go, eh? Work planning. What is work planning? Today we've talked about so many things, eh? From interpersonal skills to group dynamics to PR. Now we are coming to work planning and organization. You, you see, from my point, I feel like once we develop ourselves, we move to developing others through group dynamics. Then we move to the public. Then it is time to do the work. You get my point? Yeah. yeah. With us. If I... Yes, please, Richard. It is said that um, strategy strategies, but when it comes to execution, that is where the real problem. We can write very beautiful strategies, strategies, yeah. But if there is no execution, if there is no action, then those strategies are as useless as they could have not been there. True, and I totally agree with you. And and as I was saying, uh, we've done all this work for ourselves, for our teams, for our groups. We've even addressed the public. Now it's time to do the work. And this is where work planning and organization comes. Don't assume since you are an MPSA agent, you don't have space in work planning and organization. You know, the fact that you your work is, is not office-based, it's in the field, does not mean you don't have space in work planning and organization. So quickly, uh, let's see, why, why do we do all this? Planning and organization are the two key factors at work. You can't work without planning and organizing. Then the next bit is uh, work planning and organizing skills are very, very important. You cannot assume skills in work planning or, or organizing. You better get a mentor or get a coach to help you learn how to plan and organize yourself. Then there's the next bit is the better you are organized at work, the more efficient and successful you'll become. Because I see people being told, you need to be more organized. Your records are not as organized as I thought they would be. Why are they telling you that? They want you to become more efficient and successful at your work. Then the last bit, effective planning allows you to achieve important goals and results that you need. Through planning, you'll know this is my goal. And if I plan for this goal, then the chances of me getting the results that I had expected also highly increases, all right? Uh, let's see uh, rules for work planning and organizing. What are some of the things that you need to consider? Number one is prioritization. What is important? What is not important? Uh, if you allow me, I'll draw for you a quadrant. Uh, yes. Uh, I want a new sheet. Uh, how do you get a new sheet? Uh, okay. Yes. I want to draw for you a quadrant. A quadrant is a square. I'm just using big names. <laughs> Okay, that's a quadrant. Yeah, you say important, important. Here you say urgent. So if, if for example, you have four, four tasks, four tasks, uh, do you ask yourself, is it important and is it urgent? So if it is important and it's urgent, you put it here. You start with that job. If it's important, because this is going upwards, 
and this one is going like this, uh, like that. So if it's important, if it's highly important and highly urgent, you start with that work. So you, you put task one, task two, task three, these are important and urgent. Then you ask yourself, is this important, but is it urgent? You tell yourself it's important, but it's not very urgent. You, 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 you take that task here, okay? If it's important, but it's not urgent, you put it at, at that quadrant. So you start with the most important and the most urgent, then you move to, is it important? And, and if it's important, but it's not urgent, then you place it there. Then you come to this one. The one that is very urgent, but it's not important. That's the next. Okay. If it's very urgent, but it was not, you see on importance equal low, but on urgency equal high, then you start, that is, uh, this is one, this is two, this is three. So here you list the things that you think they're urgent, but they're not important. You'll work on them at that point. Then the very last one is four. It's neither important nor urgent. You know, but I, I feel like a lot of us normally start with this quadrant here. It's neither important, it's neither urgent, but you are doing it. But then Namuza, but I gave you some work which was more important and more urgent. Because you see, work that is important and urgent is also very complex in nature. It requires a lot, you to think a lot, to do a lot. And like Utu took as it to talk it's neither important nor urgent. So that is the Purity. Point. Yes, please. There is a very good book that is called Eat the Frog. Yes. Uh, you eat the frog that, because normally, ordinarily, people don't eat Frogs. frogs. If you notice that some, <laughs> if you notice some kind of work is difficult, mm, you start with that. We start with that. Mm -hmm. But as mm -hmm. we cannot start work because of a call, because that is only probably urgent, it mm -hmm. has just come. Then mm -hmm. we stop doing the most important. We start doing the one that needs speed and it's not important. Yeah, true. So, so that is the, the place of prioritization. I hope you, you are able to use the quadrant. Just draw four squares and ask yourself, is it important, is it urgent? Then you start categorizing those roles and start with quadrant one, the one that is important and very urgent. The next one is time management. This one, the time is a very key resource and also it's a very short resource. Like this two hours in Asia, you know, so time management is also very important. Coordinating of resources, you ask yourself, and resources are, uh, resources is not only about money. It's about the people, the machinery, the methods, the money. Uh, they're normally five M's. Let me see if I'm able to, to retrieve them. As I, Machine, as I call, man. Money, method. How many are those? <laughs> Uh, let me see our uh, method. Uh, okay, five M's. Niki zikumbuka nita wambia. Yeah, we have man. machine. We have mm -hmm. money, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Method. Uh, method. Now you can add method and the other one that you uh, mentioned. If, if I remember. Which, which one have you mentioned? Hmm. Sorry? Which one have we, we not mentioned? Because we have mentioned method, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Machine, mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting the four, the fifth one. I don't know. Okay. Uh, as, as we continue looking for the fifth one, I know we'll find it and wonder what were we thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but ideally, oh, we part a man, mas, material, material as well, material. material, machine, money, and. And, and and here they call it minutes, but that factor is time. Eh? Mm. So uh, so coordinating of all these resources, do we have the right people for the job? Are they skilled the way they need to be uh, to be skilled? Is, is is money available if they need to use money to make that work to, to become successful? Then the next bit is delegating. 
I remember at one point, uh, as I mentioned about delegation, and all of us, as much even if you feel like you're so low in the hierarchy, you have space for delegation. Then the next bit is creating systems. And there should be creating systems that work because we also have systems that don't work. Don't work. Yeah. Yes. So there it should be creating systems that work. Then the last yeah, we one, normally say that um, yes. bad systems will create, will create a bad person. So we should have <laughs> effective. <laughs> if you have very bad systems, mm -hmm. definitely even superstars will become bad people because yeah, of bad yeah, systems. Totally, totally. I agree with you. And 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 planning ahead. Let us all let us all of us take pride in planning ahead. Let's not be waiting for the last minute. That's when you are, you are looking for your laptop. That's when you are looking for your phone. You know, let's always take pride in planning ahead. Uh, Can I add something? Yes, please. Yeah, that is why we normally say in motivational speaking that you can create your own luck. If you can put your laptop at the right place, your mm. money at the right place, mm -hmm. your machine at the right place, you are creating your own luck. You are not depending yes. on external. We are products of choices and uh, decisions. We are not products of circumstances mm -hmm. and external factors. Yes, external factors exist, but mm -hmm. let us do as much as possible to become predictors of our mm -hmm. own success by True. organizing. Yeah. And planning ahead of time. And planning ahead of time, yeah. Thank you so much for that, uh, Richard. And at that, I would want to call it a close. Uh, I've come to the end of today's session. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who was able to indulge me. Uh, Arthur, Cecilia, uh, let me see the people who indulged me uh, by talking to me. Uh, Jacqueline, John, Demi, uh, let me see who else. Uh, there was uh, Sarah, uh, there was Caroline, all those for uh, indulging me in, in the conversation. And also for everyone who was able to contribute to the chat box. Uh, thank you so much for indulging. I really hope all of us have learned something. I'd like to, to hear out if any, any, any closing remarks. What have you learned? Did you enjoy the session? Have you left a better person than you came uh, this afternoon? And, and and as always, I know we always keep asking for feedback. So feel free to just give us feedback so that we, as we continue, we become better trainers, you know, we become better service providers to you all. Uh, so other than that, uh, thank you so much, Richard, for, uh, for, for facilitating today's session. And I want to hand it over back to you so that you can speak. Thank you very much, Purity, for the wonderful, wonderful work that you've done. We believe that we are going to become more transformed. We believe we are going to become more efficient. We believe that we are going to build relationships. We mm. believe that we are going to synergize more so that we can become productive, profitable, good mm. communication, optimal use of resources, All right? Yes. Thank you very much. I can also see Lawrence who, who kept quiet. I'm very appreciative of her presence. I'm sure <laughs> she was there to be uh, just in case. <laughs> yes, just in case. Just in These case. things you never so, know. <laughs> uh, just in case you decided to develop. <laughs> yeah, I have to appreciate everybody for yes. having attended. We will meet next Saturday. I no, will next ask Saturday Anne is a holiday. Pray for us. Oh, it's Richard, a holiday. Next right. Saturday is a holiday, so we'll meet the Saturday mm. after. It's okay. Yeah. I'll ask Anne Adair to pray for us yeah. wow. as we finish. The... Let's pray. Our Father. Let, let, before you pray, I'll say thank you very much for the initiative. That is called being proactive. Yes, yes, being yes. Being proactive, uh. right? <laughs> right? Courageous, being confident, being brave. Thank you very much, Arthur. You can pray for us. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this opportunity to convene and to learn. 
We pray, dear God, that you help us not only to become good listeners, but also to become good doers of the word, of all that we've learned. As we prepare to go our separate ways, we pray that thy grace upon us and thy blessings be upon us. These and many more blessings we stand in need of, we humbly ask of thee in the sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Thank Enjoy you very much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And make sure you're not caught with curfew. Those of us who are in Nairobi region <laughs> or stuck on Sika Road. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your Saturday and your Sunday as well. Uh, let's meet uh, the week of 8th, 8th of May, for our fourth session. I've also sent you the, the feedback link uh, on the chat box. Just click on it and give us feedback. We really appreciate it.